Hello everyone and welcome back to the Raise Aerospace Mars Colonization Series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1 and in this episode we're going to start off by trying to refuel uh, one of our hydrogen NTR stages, one of the nervous stages and we're going to do that with uh, this stage here which is basically the same tank but we've got different engines at the bottom and we've also got a Hydrolox tank up there because we're using BE7 engines primarily to try and get to the NTR stage, which is currently docked to our Mars Transfer Vehicle 1. And uh, yeah, we'll see how that works out. I don't know if this is the best setup or not, but I'm thinking that actually carrying the heavy uh, nervous stage along with us for this, not to mention expensive nervous stage, uh, probably would not be the best idea. So. We'll try this and see what happens. Uh, I'll throttle down and I'll let KOS control the rocket, I think. Uh, though I do need to make a slight adjustment in that we want to make sure it doesn't think that we're going to be using fairings. So edit Kasei. And what I want to do in the script, if I can reach it, is instead of fairings releasing at 150,000, I manually input what altitude I want the fairings to go to, I, I'll put zero for no fairings. Okay. There's a sound lag on ignition, but here we go. Uh, can I just not have that lit up, please? <laughs> I don't want a pur well, I mean a purple rocket isn't the worst thing, but okay, there we go. So pretty heavy with this whole tank being delivered to orbit as well as that tank there. Actually, this hydrolock stage is not enough to get where we're going, so I've caused myself additional pain and suffering. I'm testing out a candle engine, which is actually one of my favorite engines from KSB Interstellar. Basically, what it does is we're going to be passing the hydrogen here over an RTG. It doesn't provide much thrust. It's like 4 kilonewtons or something like that. But it's got about a Nerva's uh, ISP, so... That's nice, but uh, you wouldn't be able to sit through all of it. If we take a look at um, our burn time, you can see 7 hours and 39 minutes to burn through all of that. And uh, the actual delta V provided by the candle engine, if it was to have to carry this fuel here, would be 3,800 meters per second. Um, fortunately, it won't have to carry that fuel there. Now, uh, just the uh, BE-7s have 2,658, so they're fairly limited. They can't do the job on their own. We will need the candle engine to do part of it. So, I've got a long burn ahead of me, basically, is what I'm saying. Because even the BE-7s are going to take a while. We really want to fill up that nervous stage, though, so it can at least get itself back down to a lower orbit, or just eject out that lander. I'm contemplating whether to make a larger lander though. The problem with having designed that lander very specifically for our, our purposes, uh, and you can watch the rocket science videos to see that, is that I designed it very specifically for our purposes, and it doesn't have a whole lot of margin. I would like more margin, especially I would like more thrust to weight ratio built in instead of having to slap the ED5 packs on. So I am contemplating whether to create a new engine uh, or maybe use the ED5s and build them into the stage instead of having them as separate packs. So taking a look at that. The, the lander stage, nifty and all, but uh, a little bit underwhelming. Okay, getting ready for booster separation here. And booster set. Main engines have thrall back up. Okay, separation of the core and ignition of the second stage. We should be able to use the second stage to do a little bit of the work uh, starting us off on the way to the target too, hopefully. Maybe my intent to use this stage to help out was a bit premature. It looks like we're going to be using all the Delta V from it after all. And that makes sense because it is a very heavy payload. 
Okay, and we are in orbit. All right, that's done. I don't think there's any need to keep this hanging out. So change your plans, move those thrusters back there. And um, yep, separation, separation. And we might as well start these out, throttle this down. Okay. So. Mm, all right. So we actually have four candle engines, which would be very expensive. We're talking about four RTGs here uh, in order to provide some thrust. One candle engine. I mean, we're already talking about a, a seven hour burn time. And I don't think these are configured to use uh, thrust during time warp. So. Yeah. Yeah, it would not be a good idea. Anyway, we are going to plot for our... Oh, there's a lot of waste heat. Oh, I might have needed to, for the RTGs, put some radiator panels, huh? Hmm. That's a bit of a problem. Let me deactivate the generator. Activate. Okay, activating a generator reduces uh, waste heat, so we should probably keep that up. But... Do we explode when the waste heat goes up? <laughs> I mean... One nice thing is with RTGs, you don't need to add solar panels. Okay, ignition. Are the little candles producing thrust? Yes, 4.5 kilonewtons. 1,000 seconds of ISP. Okay, I'll uh, talk to you sometime in the next decade. <laughs> well, I've sort of abandoned the original node because, well, we were deviating so much from it, it didn't make any sense, and we might as well stick to prograde anyway. Either way, we'll get up there somehow, and we can correct it. And uh, the RTGs, the little candle engines are really looking hot um but uh, maybe it's all right hopefully the waste heat accumulation is the rate is going down which i guess you would expect since it's shooting most of it out the back i also didn't really want to strand another nerva out here but I also don't want to really strand the candle engines out here either, so we'll see. <laughs> it's tough with all these really big stages that are just serving as tugs. And really only another one of them can refuel them. But we can't really decommission them very well. Because they're nuclear things. Hmm. The one chance we have with the candle engines though is we could slap it on one of the transfer vehicles, one of the Mars transfer vehicles, and add a hydrogen tank to the Mars transfer vehicle. In that case, you know, it could make some small maneuvers with the candle engines instead of the ion engines. Not quite as efficient as ion engines, but um, faster, obviously. Could be an improvement. And not as heavy as carrying a full NTR system. Honestly, this is going to be so far off that maybe I should go around at this point. Should go full orbit first. Only worried about the waste heat accumulation. Oh, but then that's going to pass by... Ah, oh, right. Hmm. Yeah, we can't really do that so easily. Uh, well, let's go around a few times then. But then, uh, you know what, let's get some cooling on the hydrogen gas. So we're gonna start cooling. Uh, I'm not buying, there seems to be surplus cooling, that's wrong. Oh, that's because we've got this tank as well. But, no, that doesn't make any sense. Let me stop that for now. The math should have worked, but I'm suspicious of it. And I have a right to be suspicious of, suspicious of it because I did it in the first place. I mean, if you take a look at it, the uh, hydrogen that gets consumed when we start cooling is 
200 units, and then the liquid hydrogen that gets added is 200 un uh, 2 units. And uh, hydrogen gas to hydrogen is a factor of 100, I believe, so it shouldn't produce any surplus. Yeah, the timing's gonna be off. We'll see what we can do. I think I'm gonna do the inclination adjustment just with the candles. Burn time 56 minutes, and I sort of believe it. Okay, the burn took long enough that we couldn't correct all of the inclination. The nodes drifted away from us, so we'll have to do the rest over there. We're not really gonna catch up to it this time around. We'll have to do a burn up here. I did try time warping using the regular time warp with the candle engines. That did not work. 15-ish kilometers. That'll be good enough for now. We'll do further adjustments, but okay, 100 meters per second there, and then 775 over there. And then finally we'll catch up and do that burn. Putting a reaction wheel on these things would probably be a good idea too. I want to see how much we have with just the BE7s. Because we certainly want to get done with all the oxygen. There's no point using the liquid hydrogen instead of the oxygen because we're trying to deliver the liquid hydrogen. So we want to use as much of the oxygen as possible. Um, it looks like uh, we should do this burn with, with the BE7s. Maybe with some candles mixed in. We'll just use all of them. I guess maybe I should introduce some loss in the cooling process, but then it wouldn't be a zero boil off system. Okay, ignition. Now the B7s don't have an infinite ignitions, they have a total of 10 right now. The candle engines have infinite ignitions, I believe, so no Nerva 60 limit on them, which given that they're just RTGs with fuel flowing past them, or through them, sort of makes sense. I feel at this point though that I probably should have sent crew up, so that we can do some of the grabbing candle engines, putting it onto the other thing, and stuff like that. Okay, well that should be good enough as far as that burn's concerned. Yeah, we'll figure the rest out once we get there. Okay. So if you're wondering why not use the candle engines instead of the Nerva, for instance, well, the problem is, at least in this case, we're trying to deliver most of the hydrogen. Um, if we were trying to use all the contents of this stage like the Nerva does, that would not be good. That would be a seven hour burn time, right? And that's with four of these candles, which is pretty expensive. Okay, and finally the burn to match speeds with transfer vehicle 1. And ignition. I never got rid of the nose cone. Shoot. So at some point, of course, I expect to run out of the oxygen and then we're just going to be strictly on the candles. And hopefully, if I plan this out right, that will be a close thing. Okay, this is looking very good. The close approach distance continues to go down. And hit a minimum. Alright, so 23 kilometers will be what we have. Let's knock off the nose cone. And that's the end of the BE7s. I just want to get into render range, of course. Okay, that'll do the trick. Five meters per second, hopefully these little guys can handle that once we get there. Okay, we are now drifting in here at about four meters per second. I think that's controllable. Gotta always think about that. Uh, you don't want to go in too quickly. I think we're going to dock at the, at the quest airlock as before. We can't target it right now, though.
I don't think there's enough fuel in the Nerva tug for it to undock and then for us to dock directly to it. We'll have to dock to the transfer vehicle itself to transfer fuel into the Nerva tug before the Nerva tug can go off. Oh, the station's rotating. That's not fair. Hold on. Uh, no, no. Uh, just kill rotation. You, station. You're not supposed to be rotating. That's not good. Well, let's see how well its reaction wheels do. I mean, the downside of extra patient long maneuvers is that it takes me longer to actually do them and yeah, obviously that delays the series to some extent, but the upside is that's really how they would probably do it. So the idea of using smaller engines that are more efficient to make a whole bunch of burns to rendezvous with something is probably how it would be done rather than using the big engine that isn't as good because it's so heavy like Nerva. If NASA could get together some RTGs for candle engines and figure out how to manage it, and if it turns out that they got a decent amount of ISB, even less than these maybe, would still be probably worth it. If instead of uh, thinking of it as four RTGs, you would like to think of them as really, really tiny nuclear reactors, uh, that's fine too. Okay, we have a good dock. And... Alright, yeah, we are still uh, cooling down the hydrogen gas here. And we're gonna transfer... Wait, we're building up hydrogen gas. Mm, did the cooling stop? Oh, it's because of the hydrogen gas over there. Let's start cooling that too. That had boil off as well, of course. It's just been sitting there the whole time. Then we're gonna transfer some fuel in over there. The goal is to have both be able to get back to a lower orbit. There's also another Nerva hanging out somewhere. That's basically balanced as far as the fuel is concerned between the two. Let's see if that can undock and still work out for us. Have enough fuel. 4,690, but I sort of want to get to carry that lander with it. It's got no fuel in, so it should be pretty light right now. We need some fuel though, so that it can dock with the with the Nerva tug. We don't want to top it off. Actually, you know what? Um, even that should be enough. But let's more of that liquid methane. Okay, I think that should be enough to allow it to do the docking. Okay. So what we're probably going to do is add uh, another little stage between the Nerva and this lander so that that stage can help the lander get into orbit around Mars and everything. That might be like one of our um, sky cranes. And then the Nerva will just boost it out to uh, Mars transfer orbit. The Nerva itself will capture back into Earth orbit. And the lander and its additional stage will proceed on its own. Oh. Oh, oh, I see. The docking port's uh, colored gray, and so it sort of blended in with the background. I was going like, why is there some space there? And it's actually because of the color of the docking port and the fact that it's really shiny. Okay, well, we've got 4,239, which should be able to get us into a lower orbit. Let's make sure we're controlling from here. And once again, I want to lock the fuel down here. 
because we'll have to have the lander separate off and sneak in the other stage in between. And I'd rather not use the RCS thrusters on the nervous stage for that. Okay, so... This is where we're, we are. We need to sort of sidestep the whole situation. Actually, the retrograde vector seems a little bit offset. Maybe that'll be okay. Oh, I, I had cooling and production on. That's why our hydrogen gas wasn't getting depleted. Shoot. We may send crew up to this to uh, slap on some extra thrusters. Its turning capabilities are not good. We won't go to a low, low orbit, but we'll get low enough so that uh, we don't have to use really heavy rockets to resupply this. We're headed out towards the sun. No, not really. Just a coincidence. Okay, that'll be good enough, I think. Getting it to within a thousand kilometers is sufficient, I feel. Okay, it took a while to turn around, but now ignition. And ignition will take a while too, of course. Hmm, I thought about keeping the periapsis up, but actually that doesn't really make any sense. We don't need to do that. Let's just go back to retrograde. Having it uh, lower at one side is not a problem. I sort of want to grab the other nervous stage, but I don't think the candle stage can do that and also bring itself back, so toss up. Okay, I'll leave 200 meters per second in this stage. We don't want it to be completely adrift. Okay. So that'll have to be fine, and I'm gonna stop production. It'll produce some on its own anyway with boil off. Uh, we'll turn off the thrusters, of course. So yeah, um, let me take a look at uh, how much delta V we'll have with the candle stage, and whether it can do something with our other nerva stage. Well, it's got six thousand meters per second on its own. All candle power, though. Three hours worth of candle power. You know what? This Nerva Tug isn't quite as good as the other one because it doesn't have a docking port up front. It's got this thing. And I don't like that. That I mean, Obviously, it's less useful. I mean, how is it going to tug anything? It can't tug anything. So, so what we need to do is um, push it to the moon. I think our disposal mechanism for, for Nerva Tugs is going to be to smash them into the moon. So maybe we can transfer enough fuel. We'll probably need at least 800 meters per second. Transfer enough fuel into this from the candle stage to allow it to do that. I'll see about that. Okay, so we've got sunrise there, and this is quite a view. I noticed the glow on the stage here, and so I wanted to catch it. Uh, let's actually drop that. I don't know if we could sort of do something with the camera here. It's sort of more interesting when it was just that little spot, and the glow was sort of a yellowish-orange. Now that it's white light, it's a little bit more common, but still, you know, a nice view. Okay, so the plan to get to the other Nerva stage looks like this. We're going to do a small burn at apoapsis in 11 hours. That's 11.1 .1 meters per second. And then another burn uh, down here, which is going to be um, 37.6. And then once we get there, we will need to correct by 217 meters per second. And it's all going to be with the candles. So I'm just going to do those off camera because it's going to take a while. And I'll be back with you once we are close to the Nerva stage. Okay, well, we're going to need to close in, but we've gotten rid of most of the relative velocity. Still 52 kilometers out, though. So I've been a little bit suspicious about how the whole cooling system works on here. 
and I just reviewed the video because I was suspicious about the Delta V and checking back it doesn't seem like we've used the Delta V we were supposed to have used and yeah so I don't know I'm, I'm not gonna use this cooling system because I think there's something wrong with it either that or this Delta V reading is incorrect one or the other but uh, yep yeah, something something's wrong here so I'll just lay off of the cooling to make up for it because we just didn't use Delta V we should have used doing these burns. We were supposed to use about 200, we've used about 50 or something like that. So, yep, I don't know what's up with that. It seems to track with the Delta V now, so I think it's just the cooling system, but I don't know what. Because I tried to get the ratio right, but apparently I did not. Okay, so based on the mass of the other stage, I have uh, determined that we need about 4.8 4 tons of fuel over there. Basically 5 tons, let's say, just to give it margin. I've already made a maneuver over there so that I can hit the moon, and uh, it'll take about 1,078 meters per second. Now this currently, according to MechJeb, has a total of 20 tons of fuel, or a little bit less than that. So... We'll see how much it has left over in terms of delta V after transferring 1,000 meters per second to the other stage. Hopefully enough. Oh, what the heck am I gonna dock to? Gosh darn it. <laughs> I've, I've made a horrible mistake. There's nothing to dock to. I hate myself. Uh, uh yeah, there's no docking port for this on there. We could send a little mating device to convert from the NASA docking system to the... Well, that means what we really need to send is one of my tugs, huh? Okay, well, I don't know whether it's safe or not, but... 4 millimeters per second. Seems like it's drifting away rather than towards. Okay, let me get one of the tugs from Transfer Vehicle 1 and see if it can help with this business. Okay, I'm not fully fueling the tug in question, but this should do. It's got one docking port on one side, one on the other. It's effectively going to be an adapter. Undock. Okay, I'll make the rendezvous off camera just to speed things up. And I'll be back with you once it gets there. And hopefully the two large tugs will not have drifted too far away. Fortunately, the target was just a little bit ahead of the transfer vehicle and this tug when we started the transfer and so it was pretty easy to rendezvous and that's good because it only has internal battery it doesn't have any solar panels on it so do not want this to take too long and it looks like the two of them are pretty close together still okay we have docked we might as well control from that docking port now and let's finally proceed. We will take advantage of the methane and oxygen in the tug as well. RCS on. Forward. Yeah, we'll just go with this orientation, even though I think uh, we're upside down with respect to that docking port. Oh, we booped, but we didn't quite connect. And that's a bit of a problem because um, the target does not have any control. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, uh, we may have made a big mistake. It's definitely rotating, and that's making it harder. The last time booped and missed. I don't know how this is going to work out. I feel like it's lying to me somewhat. Ah, uh, we deflected. Oh, shoot. Hmm. This may be more difficult than I thought it was. I think for the moment we should just abandon this entire idea. <laughs> well, I mean, that's all rotating, and that's not going to work out for us. 
And this thing doesn't seem to... Well, with it rotating, it's got to be hard for it to keep negative parallel anyway. So we're backing off. So much work trying to just dispose of a nervous stage. I'm gonna bring the tug back to the state, uh, back to transfer vehicle one, and then I'm gonna get this candle stage back to low Earth orbit. I think that's probably the best combination of ideas, and we'll leave the poor nervous stage up here for now. Okay, back to Mars transfer vehicle, which is ahead of us, so we really need to dump ourselves into a lower orbit. It's still quite a gap, huh? Okay, well, all right, we're within 100 kilometers. I'll take that. I need to make like a resolution not to fill around with these maneuver nodes too much. I spend too much time doing that and not enough just executing the maneuver node and getting on with things. I mean, it never turns out exactly the way I plotted it anyway, but I keep trying to get it close. Okay, well, the closest approach distance ended up being a lot closer than was initially advertised anyway. Oh, but here the relative velocity is much higher. It wasn't... we, we overburned. We weren't supposed to meet up here. We ended up with two tangencies instead of, not tangencies, two crossings instead of just one tangency. Oh well, we can still manage it. Well, at least it's relatively easy to get these little guys back where they belong. Ooh, it's turning a lot. Okay, slow down. Okay, and with that, this tug is back in place. We can detank the other one. Okay. And let's get the candle stage back down to a more usable orbit since it has nothing left to do up here. Okay, well, I'm about to pay the heavy price of using these candles um, because, of course, we don't have the BE-7s available anymore. We've run out of the oxygen so I'm just gonna have to leave this burning for a while we've got a 1308 meter per second burn up here to bring our orbit down and a 2476 meter per second burn there which can't possibly be done on one orbit of course we'd have to go around a few times I might not do all of it immediately we'll see but yeah but it has been handy. I mean, there's no doubt that it has uh, performed well. Oh, we probably should put some radiators on here. Though I think these little guys have their own little radiators. In theory. I mean, it says radiator cooling on it there. Radiator cooling on. So, yeah. Well, I guess I'll start now, but we're certainly not going to get it done on one go. And I don't think I'll just keep doing it. We'll see what I have patience for. Okay, well, I did in fact decide to bring it all the way down. Uh, turns out it was not so bad as long as I watched YouTube videos while doing it. Uh, it was about four orbits. This is the fourth orbit that we've been doing a burn here. And we're just about where I want it to be. So that I can be refueled and pick up further payloads, of course. I think this will be convenient enough. All right, we'll shut down there. So, yeah, we're going to put uh, probably the new habitat module that's going to be opposite the quest airlock onto here. And then also we need to top off its hydrogen. And I need to look into building a new lander stage. I'll probably go all the way and uh, make a blender model of that and see what I can do. Basically, it'll be the same process as I did with the other lander stage, which I showed in the rocket science video, but I'll be doing it without explaining all the details, but it'll be the same math. Um, just I'll add more margin into it and give it more payload capacity. So, yeah, anyway, uh, this has been a video about 
nervous stages and candle stages, I guess. Uh, we need to use them more effectively if we're going to progress in this whole business. So I'm just learning how to do that, I think. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.